Hi there, welcome to episode 537 of Liv falls asleep with a pencil in her hand whenever she wakes up there's a pretty picture on a piece of paper in front of her. This year the taxman told me that I owe him some money and I told him I don't have any money Mr. Taxman. Do you want a picture of a cat instead? So I'm gonna draw a cat. To draw this cat, you need to find a picture of a cat online. So just Google cat into Google and pick the first image that you see. Next, you'll need a piece of paper and some pencils. I use this really old box of Staedtler Lumograph pencils that I got 12 years ago, I think. My grandmother gave them to me. They were the first case of pencils I ever got and I'm still able to use them. So that can tell you how often I use them. I actually was able to find the exact same tin that I have. It's got this picture of a car on the front. I don't think they make them anymore with this car, so it is vintage. For this drawing, I'm starting off with the lightest pencil. In this box, it's the 4H pencil. I like to do the outline of the shape first and get any sort of large details like the edges of the eyes, the nose, the ears, it's very much just outlining at this point, and then I start to go in with more gray color. Since this is the lightest color, I basically have to cover everything in this light 4H pencil. I drew a lot of tiny hairs all over the cat, tried to make sure that I followed the sort of direction that the fur was growing. Because this is the bottom layer, you can be pretty messy and rough with it, which is always nice because I suck at being neat. This cat is a long-haired cat. He's sort of a tabby color and he's got a white face and beard along the front of his chest. I've decided it is a boy because he looks very glorious and regal with his big hairy beard. So I start with the face first and I do basically the base layer in this light pencil. And I like to work in chunks. I know some people will do their entire drawing in one shade of lead and then they'll go in with darker shades layer by layer, but I like to go layer by layer and also section by section. I like to work on a section, get it perfect, and then throw it in the trash and work on something else because it just makes things so much easier for me. Whenever I was drawing this, I had the intention of adding in the whiskers and the hairs and the ear with white, so I didn't really block them out properly like I should have, knowing what happens later on. I do have a white gel pen, but unfortunately it is a ballpoint pen, which means whenever you try to draw on top of things, you need to press kind of hard, especially on top of pencil lead like this and the ball causes the ink to sort of split into two lines instead of making one nice thick line. So I don't actually get to use the white highlight later on, which was very upsetting. I tried to rectify the situation by adding some white pencil, as you'll see later on, but that basically just smudged all the pencil together, which I should have known. So that was definitely my mistake. You either need a felt tip white pen or you need a ballpoint pen that is not my ballpoint pen, which is not a good ballpoint pen.
I was always taught in school whenever you're drawing with pencil, you're supposed to draw in tiny little circles that will mimic a nice smooth texture. But because I am drawing a cat that has fur, I am able to draw in lines, which usually was frowned upon, but I do need to get the long fur shapes, I guess you could say. So I do draw in a bunch of lines, and yes, I draw every single hair. I do cheat later on for the darker areas and just kind of rub the pencil back and forth. But for the most part with these light ones, especially around the sides, it's just a matter of drawing each teeny tiny hair onto your cat. I found as I worked up the layers, I would go back later with the 4H pencil again to darken up the areas that are actually brown. I want them to be very distinct from the white part of the front of the cat's face. After I finished up with the 2H, I am not the type of person to work one shade at a time. So the next shade that you would use would be 3H, but I usually will skip one. So I used 4H and then 2H and then I used the F pencil later on and the darkest color I used was 3B. I didn't really want this to be a super dark drawing. I never actually used the 6B pencil. That's the darkest shade this box of pencils comes in. If you were to look at my pencils inside the case, they're like a upside down bell curve. So the 6B and the 2H are by far the least used. And then whenever we get into the B, 2B and the 3B, they're all the most used pencil. But still none of them are sharpened past the halfway down the pencil length point. For this drawing, I kept my pencil very sharp. I used a stapler sharpener because I think it is by far one of the best. And I made sure it was sharp because I was drawing all of these tiny hairs. So I really needed to have a fine tip for the pencil. As I started to move down the cat's body, I became far more messy with my drawing. I tend to do this whenever drawing animals because their body hair is usually more messy and it's not as like perfectly laid down as it is around their faces. I also find as a viewer of art, I tend to look at the face of the animal the most. So I put more detail into the places that I think people will look at and I put less detail into the lower parts, like the feet and the tummy fur. I still try to get the shadows the same as much as I can and get the shape, of course, the same. And I also tried to make sure that the body was darker than the chest so you could tell that it was a cat, tabby cat without having to go in and do the exact precise location of every single black hair compared to every single brown hair. Working around the tail is where I start to get very, very messy. I let the pencil just rub back and forth and I do, again, cheat a little bit according to my art teacher because I do something called smudging. This kind of varies from artist to artist. Some people think it is cheating or laziness. Other people see it as just a way to blend colors together if you want to get a really nice, sheer, smooth color, especially whenever drawing faces. I did this because I wanted the whole area to be the same sort of shade of gray. It tends to be a little difficult to fill in places that you've drawn over with pencil, but they're not 
the base gray you want. They're still kind of, you can see the paper shining through the pencil marks. So I do smudge a little bit around the tail and then the legs and the stomach because I want them to be all the same sort of gray color. Editor's note, I know I've been saying color this entire time when talking about grays. I mean value, I just, I was using the wrong word, oopsies. Going back up over the cat, I just add some more of the darker colors in the folds of the hair around the chest and the neck just to add a little more depth because there is a very stark contrast between the brown tabby parts of the fur and the white wafts that sit over top of it. tried to add on the white whiskers here and failed miserably, so I went back in with just the lightest 2H pencil and drew on some very light whiskers just so they would be visible if you were to look really close, but I didn't want them to be very thick or noticeable because whiskers are very thin, especially because this cat in particular had white whiskers, so I did want to be as true as I could be to the original image. With the last couple of hairs drawn on, we can get on to the final shots. Thank you so much for watching this super quick video of me drawing a cat. I said maybe two videos ago that I have a new project coming up that I'm very excited for. I have been dealing with a couple setbacks, including my birthday coming up, so I haven't actually yet been able to start on that one, but it is still in my queue of future projects, which hopefully will be the video for next week. But. I made that promise once in the past and I failed, so I will not promise it again. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed watching. Subscribe if you did. See you later.